Hi, I'm Andy Banks. I'm here to show you the Citrix Android receiver with support for smart card authentication and support for specifically the BAI Mobile smart card reader. This is a Bluetooth card reader that can hang on a lanyard around your neck and it's really easy to use. The card sits inside, it connects via Bluetooth communication to an Android device. Now today I'm going to be showing you how we connect to virtual applications and virtual desktops from this Motorola Zoom tablet device. Now this is my Android device. It's a Motorola Zoom tablet and there's two things that are needed to be able to authenticate to virtual desktops and applications via the smart card authentication with the Bluetooth reader. Now the first is the PSSC Lite middleware component that's available from BAI when you purchase one of these BAI mobile smart card readers. Now as you can see for this test I'm going to be using a DOD test certificate CAT card. The other thing that you're going to need is a Citrix receiver. It's not a specialized version of Citrix receiver to support smart cards. It's the same one that's available on the Google Play Store today. Once you've downloaded and installed Citrix receiver all you have to do to be able to connect to those backends is know the URL site of where you're connecting to. I'm going to add an account and I've already got a website that supports smart cards and this is a URL of a PN agent web interface site and it could also be passed through a Netscaler as well. Now I'll click next and it's going to go ahead and validate that server exists. Now that it's validated that it's going to ask me for a username, password, and domain name. But at the bottom there's a checkbox now that says use smart card. We're going to use smart card authentication because username and password is not an option for us. We'll click log on and once we're doing that you'll see from the Bluetooth smart card reader that there's a little blue light inside that indicates that it's reading the certificate off of the CAT card. As it's reading this certificate it's passing it back through to the web interface to make sure that I am a valid user. It's also going to prompt me for my PIN as a two-factor authentication. Once I've entered my PIN, it's going to read again the certificates from the card and pass them through to the web interface site and the domain for authentication. Once it's validated that the certificates that I've got on my card are good, it's going to then ask me for my applications. Now that I've gotten that far, I'll simply choose some of the applications that are available to me. Now these can be individual applications like Internet Explorer or Notepad, but these can also be virtual desktops as well. I've got a server-based desktop that I'll just launch. This could certainly be a Windows 7 virtual desktop because this is supported on both Zen Desktop and Zen App. Now as it's passing my credentials through to the session, it's now launching a secure session between uh, this device and the backend infrastructure. And you'll see the first thing that pops up is a gesture shortcut screen. This is the first time that you run it. You can see some of the shortcuts to help you navigate how to use an Android tablet versus using a traditional keyboard and mouse. Now I'll click that to clear that screen and you're going to see the Windows Gina login where I've got my smart card credentials that I can use and then type in my username and password. I'll just bring up the keyboard here and type in my PIN one more time. Now, as it is launching me into my virtual desktop session, again, you can also see that it's still reading the certificates from the smart card. Now, one of the nice things about the Android receiver uh, and connecting to a virtual desktop session, sometimes it's hard to navigate a virtual desktop or virtual server desktop infrastructure without seeing things in an Android friendly way. So as I connect into my Zen app server backend, you're going to see that this is a little bit different looking than the typical virtual desktop that you might be accustomed to. This is because of our mobility extensions that we put on our Zen app server. So instead of being a start button at the bottom, I've got a start button here with the native look and feel of my Android application, Android desktop, I'm sorry. And again, I can access all of my applications and my start menu through this interface. It's a little bit easier to navigate than trying to use the traditional method. Now I'll go ahead and launch the active client certificate software just so that you can see 
what the Windows session is seeing now that I'm connected remotely using this Android device. As it launches, it's communicating through my Bluetooth reader and I can go in and take a look at the certificates that are on this CAT card. Now the test name in here is Oscar Gunter. And so you can see that it matches up with the credentials that are on this card as well. Now the mobility extensions are something that you can turn off if you're not familiar with that interface and you want the traditional Windows look and feel. Well, I'm done working on my Android device and I'm back in the office. Now, in order to get my session back, all I have to do is take my CAT card out of my BAI sled and put it into my workstation's CAT card reader. Then, once again, all I have to do is pin in. Now, because the session is running safe and secure in the data center, I don't have to worry about any of that data being on this device. If this device gets lost or stolen, then I have nothing to worry about. Everything's running in the data center.